South Africa is known for many things, its culture, its history, but when most people think of it, they think animals. And even here on the Garden Route, animal conservation is a big focus. The fantastic natural setting provides the perfect backdrop to the many wildlife sanctuaries in this part of the country and gives families the chance to get to know the animals better with up-close encounters and we get to actually come inside the cheetah cage and get an up-close look at these amazing animals that you don't see very often actually out on game drives here in Africa. I'm walking a serval. And fun activities on this coast provide lots of time for monkeying around. We're up in the canopy so we can see the monkeys. <laughs> Take a look, boys. Do you see any? I see one. I see one. <gasps> I see one. I see one. I see one. Yay! I have a new species! Uh -oh. and trying to learn some of what the locals sing and say, some well-known, and some a bit more difficult. You start by QI. Join us as we explore South Africa's garden route in Travel with Kids Africa! I'm Nathan. And I'm Seamus. And we're mom and dad. We're traveling around the world discovering amazing countries, new cultures, and really wild experiences together. Come along with us as we learn all about our planet and about being together as a family. As we discover the wonders of the world, the wonders of nature, and sometimes wonder, what were we thinking? In Travel with Kids. Located east of Cape Town on South Africa's southern coast, the Garden Route stretches from Mossel Bay in Western Cape to the border of the Eastern Cape and is one of South Africa's biggest attractions. Its lush vegetation of finbos and forest give it this nickname and provide ample shelter for its 300 bird species and other animals, many protected in its dozen or so nature reserves. This area's excellent weather is rated as the second most mild climate in the world by Guinness Book of World Records. And that means there's lots of outdoor activities for the whole family to enjoy. We're staying at Hog Hollow Country Lodge near Plettenberg Bay, where one of the owners, Debbie, tells us about some of these activities. There's literally something for everybody. We've got monkey land, we've got birds of Eden, there's the Nikpa, which is a wildlife sanctuary for wild cats, there's an elephant sanctuary, there's numerous beautiful walks, pristine environment from a natural point of view, there's horse riding, there's a wine farm, this whole area is becoming quite well known now for producing wine. She says they can keep us as busy as we'd like, but we decide to narrow it down to a few nearby reserves and a couple of activities. So after breakfast, we head out to explore the area. With two monkeys in tow, the obvious first choice for us is to visit Monkey Land. So we head over where we are greeted by some very excited primates. Yeah, some howlers getting very excited to meet you guys. Eh? <laughs> With a focus on conservation and rehabilitation, Monkey Land offers guests the chance to see monkeys and other primates in a natural setting. I think, uh, stay where you are, stay where James you are. James and Nathan also remember them from the Madagascar movie, yeah. right guys? Like 28 acres about, uh, fencing all around, and it's like 400, 450 primates in here, 10 species. The mission of the preserve is to rehabilitate injured and captive monkeys and educate the public about conservation issues. As I always say, it's difficult because um, the greatest threat is deforestation. It's, uh, it's in South Africa mainly, you see those vivids coming into your lodges. And the vast majority of primates that we have here, guys, have been uh, either rescued or donated or confiscated. And so we're more of a safe haven or uh, refuge camp. And they come from around the world and somehow for the first time learn to be a monkey. <laughs> and they're not the only ones learning monkey behavior. Right over here, we've got a brand new species. <laughs> This is uh, one of the rarest, but also one of the most uh, deadliest. <laughs> oh. It's a shameless monkey. <laughs> Yay, I have a new species. 
tails. They might not have tails, but they, they are very good in hanging. <laughs> and speaking of tails, the boys spot some very famous tails. Ringtail lemurs, national animals of Madagascar, guys. I'm surrounded by monkeys. Oh, look at those dudes. Endangered ring-tailed lemurs are native to Madagascar, where their natural forest is quickly disappearing. Most kids know them as the fun-loving party bunch from the movie Madagascar. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. They eat fruit, bark, and sap, and it looks like it's feeding time. They come down from the trees to a feeding platform where the kids get to watch them up close. It's weird, they're like picking oh, what they want. Oh, there's another yellow squirrel monkey. It's, it's like a human, they decide what they want. And although they do have feeding platforms, they also hide food around the ground and in the trees to encourage natural behaviors. Forage is not only finding food, but it's also beneficial in a different way. Maybe socializing, but also building strategy and work out a bit because they have to go and dig and break and find stuff. So it's also a working process. One of the unique things about monkey land is that so many species roam around together. And just around the corner, we meet some more monkeys. The squirrel monkeys. These tiny monkeys, measuring only about a foot long from the head to the base of their tail, are found in Central and South America. They're very smart and known for their talking sounds and their large troops. Is he foraging right now? Yes, he's foraging right now, guys. That the best method for monkeys to learn is monkey see, monkey do. Down the path, a bridge crosses a pond where more monkeys play and eat. That, the monkey is eating the green stuff from the pond. He hangs over by his tail and grabs it, eats it. He has a mohawk. Like there's so many monkeys from so many different places. They don't, isn't it irregular to be around each other? Amazonian monkeys have to learn from the African monkeys on how to go about in, in monkey land and what to feed on and what not to, and even how to protect themselves. Now, you know what, Nathan, what is interesting? Even though they have different languages in terms of vocalization, we would like to call it language and think of it as a language. When there's danger, one would still make a call, one species, one individual out of all the ten different species, and all the other nine species, 400 primates, would understand what that means. The guide says they do notice a learning curve when the monkeys arrive, but the local monkeys are very helpful. The lush trees dangling and winding around each other makes each step feel like an adventure. I'm Indian and and even more so as the path turns into a wooden bridge swinging 60 feet over the ground below. Longest suspension bridge in South Africa, guys. We're up in the canopy so we can see the monkeys. <laughs> I see one, I see one. I see one, I see one. And it seems this is a major monkey highway here. Some monkeys hang out like, eating peanuts. She's like vegetable. And watching us, while others are not so friendly. Don't make too much eye contact with the guys when he comes past. I think he just wants to squeeze past. I guess he's the one with road rage. Apparently, this one considers himself Someone ruler of the apes. Uh, I mean, monkeys, and rightly so with this name. Known as the wise monkeys of India or the sacred monkeys of India. And although they did put the peanuts out as part of the monkey's enrichment foraging, you don't want to hand feed monkeys here or treat them like pets. See those fangs? <laughs> it's, it's coming, sir. There it is. Now you have to focus on this guy because just by the way they oh, move. Wow. Magical. Guys, look at this. There is one creature here that you can get a bit closer to. He was rescued and has no teeth, is very friendly, but very fast. But yeah, as that is one of the world's most endangered species, one of the most difficult to find. They do not spend time on the bottom in Asia, where they're native to. They live up in the canopy. Right Whoa! 
We just saw the rarest species. There's only one in this whole monkey land. And the kids notice something different about this creature. It's like a white mini gorilla. This is an ape. It's called a gibbon. Smallest species of ape, guys. What is the difference between an ape and a monkey, Nathan? Apes are more uh, relative to humans. They're more yeah. human-like than monkeys. Good. Well done. Apes usually walk or stand upright versus scurrying on all fours like monkeys. Their rotating shoulder bones allow apes to swing from branch to branch. And the guide points out one big, or should I say long, difference between monkeys and apes. Then there's something missing that you would find on monkeys that you won't find uh, on the apes. What is that, Jonas? It's a And he's got a photographical vision. He looks at the distance, he takes a picture, memorizes it, and he can look around knowing exactly where to hold on. That's 20 miles an hour. That's the speed they move at. And the jumps they make is 10 meters. So what is that? In 30 feet, yeah. And the guide tells us of another talent they have. You only hear them at times. They're known as the singers of Asia. The gibbons, they make that incredible sound. Whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, yeah, that's what they do. At the feeding platform, the gibbons stand still, and the kids are able to get really close. I'm right here, and he's just minding his own business, eating his tomato happily. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. I want to touch the human, you know? There's only a few thousand of these in the whole entire world. There's only one in Monkey Land. His name is Xantlus, and his favorite fruit is tomato. <laughs> his best friend, Zeno, is right below him gathering oranges. His best friend, yes, absolutely. Zeno and Atlas, best buddies. Why do he is my head? I was too close. He was, as mom says, he was curious enough. He just, some of them, some of the squirrel monkeys, seeing that they come from home, they just want to come and, and touch you or jump this. on you. Some monkeys, yeah, well, some monkeys come from homes and they just want to be amongst the human. And with that, it's time to head next door to discover a very different kind of animal at Birds of Eden. largest single dome free flight sanctuary in the world. The birds, it's the same principle as monkey land. The birds are either donated, confiscated or rescued. We don't buy them, we don't oh, sell them. Is that a toucan? Yeah, that's a toucan. That's called a channel bull toucan. The boys love pointing out all the birds. From Australia. Those are so naughty. the mohawk And reading about them in the guidebook we got on the way in. Interesting. Green page 33, I think. Picking up a guidebook or creating your own from a museum or a park's website is a great way to keep the kids engaged. Flamingos! Many of them like kids. You know why? So they conserve energy. That's right, because those, they have got feathers on their legs. Yeah. So that loses heat. So they tuck it under their body, warm it up, then they alternate. After the bird sanctuary, it's time for us to fly back to Hog Hollow for a little R&R. We've rented the villa at Hog Hollow, and it has plenty of room for the whole family to have a little private time. While I head poolside to soak in the fabulous views, the boys head upstairs to play in the game room. Followed by some outside time, where they discover another resident. Flap. Hey, a dog! Is it ours? This is like the best hotel yet. I like the trampoline. And after spending the afternoon Wait, playing with dogs, feeding horses, and walking the beautiful gardens at Hog Hollow, it's beach time. We head to a nearby beach where the kids play games and watch for dolphins and whales, which are often spotted just off land here, as this is a right whale birthing area. We relax on the patio at Ristorante Enrico and put in our order from an authentic Italian menu, which includes freshly caught fish dishes. Local fish from here, which has been caught just up here. That is a bomba. That's a garlic bomba. And that's what we call the anti That's And when the food is ready, so are the kids. They've built up quite an appetite during this busy day. I am about to fulfill my dream of eating a full 
pizza. See it? See that? Yesterday, the kids met Hog Hollow's horses and their groom, Becky, who invited them back to take them out for a ride. So this morning, we head down to the stables to saddle up. At the stables, Debbie helps us get geared up. Have you ever been on a horse before? Yeah. And tells us a little bit about running a lodge here. We are located close to a, a little village called Curland Village. All our staff are trained up from our local area, so people have an opportunity to chat to people who are from this area. They're born and raised. Becky lives with his family nearby and certainly enjoys working here. Get it off day, I can go home if I want to. If I'm sick, she takes care of me. That's life. If somebody is like a family. But he says life was not always like that. Because one must understand what something like apartheid did was to to rob people of their, of their pride and of their sense of self-worth, purely based on the color of their skin. He tells us about leaving home at a young age and finding work, and how young boys from all over the country banded together. Learning some of the languages, so to Kosa, Shangan, bringing pushback rich with people, also working horses, you know, so we started now helping each other. Becky says things have changed a lot since apartheid ended in the 1990s. White or black or Indian, we're sitting enjoying ourselves as they do in the pub. They sit and eat and smoke. It doesn't matter. We're all together. That's the happiness. I'm free today because I, I The people of this country are working hard on putting that behind them today. One must remember that in a township, you've got a, a, so, a social infrastructure that boosts you and that supports you and which is unconditional and it's always there. For instance, if you don't have money at the end of the month, you could actually go and knock on your neighbor's door and he will gladly offer you half of his slice of bread or half of his pot of porridge. And also a lot of the children are outside all the time. So children do not sit in a situation where they never have a playmate or they bored or they don't know what to do with themselves. They live a very physical lifestyle. They're very athletic. Becky says these horses have helped him as well. Yeah, but what I like about horses, it's they've shown me who I am. They did bring out a spirit that I'm living. I'm not a failure. I think one can easily feel sorry for people about something that they don't really need to be felt sorry for because they, they're actually very rich in certain things which you do not have. They may not have the materialistic game that you do, but they've got the time, which all of us spend all our our lives trying to to earn for ourselves. <laughs> Do I get the white one? Please say you I can get ride the white. on Chinook. Which one's Chinook? The three types of horses that the Dutch explorer Jan van Riviek, who came to South Africa in 1652, brought three types of horses with them. One was an Arab, and then it was two other types. They bred these three types of horses together. And um, it resulted in a very hardy and resilient horse. My horse's name is Sally. If you want to stop, stop. If you want to go forward, you just pull a little bit. Debbie gives us the option to ride out across the fields to see if we can find zebra or impala or down into the jungle. The kids choose the fields and after a few instructions... You can always use your voice when you want to control a horse. Because your voice, they definitely listen to your voice. If you talk to her in a nice, calm manner, Hello, <laughs> We're off. And the horses here are great listeners. Luckily, they speak both Hosa and English. Because I don't know if we could manage these instructions. It's more Hosa, it's QX. In the field, we stopped for a hot chocolate break, and the kids heard cows. We were herding cows. It was freaky because you just go up to a giant animal and and you just have to like stare it in the eye. And then it's back on the horses to enjoy the beautiful views over the hills and forests. And we're lucky enough to spot a few of the more wild residents of this area.
hi or hello. Also, you can use one word the whole day. Molo, then you say the person names. Okay, that seems easy enough. Molo. Let's go have lunch. Okay, a little harder, but doable. But then Becky throws a hardball at us. You start by QI. What does that mean in English? That means Doctor, I've got a pain on my back. It started last Saturday. Let's just try one word. Saturday, um, kibelo. Um, be. Um, um, kibelo. That's Saturday. Kiyabonga. Ani bonga kulo wa. Ya bonga buyo vaga shufu tle msa. And with that, it's time for lunch. I won't try and say it in Kosa. In addition to its amazing scenery, natural life, and adventure activities, South Africa is known for its grape growing. And just down the road, Bram and Wine Estate makes the perfect lunch spot. It's almost like having a picnic as we relax in the vineyards. The boys like meeting the estate dog. Energy. Yeah, he's, he's pretty lucky. And tasting the fresh vegetables. What is it? It's all herb. It's called it. like it. Is it spicy? Tastes like onion. And they do have a few questions about how wine is made, and the owner is glad to fill them in. Do you smash them with your feet? We have we have a, a, um, some fun days here where we bring children in from schools, and we do it like that just for the experience. But otherwise, we use a big um, balloon press, which squeezes them very gently. While yesterday was for the birds and the monkeys. Today we want to get a closer look at some of Africa's more infamous animals, big cats. Taniqua Wildlife Awareness and Rehabilitation Center offers visitors the chance to observe Africa's wild cats at close range and discover some lesser known species. This center opened in 2003, offering safe refuge and medical attention to injured or abandoned animals with the aim of releasing them back into the wild. The Awareness Center offers visitors the chance to meet animals that are not fit for release back into the wild and teaches guests about conservation issues which affect the animals. Give me a big cat. Oh. So sweet. What? He looks for my finger. Too. He could adapt himself in nature, but the only problem he has is he is used to people. Once he lost the fear of, of humans, you can't integrate him back to nature because of one reason, he's going to always look for the voices of people and in that way he's going to be a dangerous animal. And while the center hosts all sorts of cats, one of the main attractions here are the cheetahs, or the chance to walk with them in their natural environment. So we're at Taniqua Wildlife Center where the kids are able to walk with servals and we get to actually come inside the cheetah cage and get an up close look at these amazing animals that you don't see very often actually out on game drives here in Africa. Cheetah populations have dropped significantly over the past 100 years, from about 100,000 in the wild to under 10,000, which has landed this cat on the endangered species list. While it's rare to see cheetahs out on safari, it does happen, and even the guides rave about it. These majestic cats are streamlined for speed and can reach 40 miles per hour in just three strides. Cheetah is called a cheetah because it's 100% spotted. The word cheetah means spotted one. Oh. The tail is like a radar. When you run on top speed, you just zigzag, full speed. Chasing their prey, they can reach 70 miles per hour at top speed. That's about as fast as a car driving down the highway. So the kids aren't actually allowed to come in the cheetah enclosure because the, their height, they're so small that the cheetah assume that they're prey. And they actually have now stalked them through the fence and are checking them out, but they're safe outside. As far as us, we're, I guess we're safe here because we have our two guards. But she sees that they are big, but once we let them go, she's just working them out. If what is it? She's looking at you, not us.
Once the cheetahs realize the kids aren't a food source, they mark their territory. And he says, remember, this is my territory. Then they snuggle up to them a bit. So that pairing is content. And while the kids enjoy seeing the cheetah close up, through the fence, and watching us walk with them, they want their own paw-to-hand experience. So we look for something a little more their own size. This is a serval. We're taking him on a walk. His name's Usher. He comes to a serval or cheetah walk. They tell you where to go. I'm walking a serval, which is a type of cat. He tells me where to go, so I have to go and use bushes. This serval is exposed to humans only because he was injured and can't be returned to the wild. His front right leg and his back right leg, is you can see he's got a bit of a limp. So we take him out on walk because it's good exercise. Like the nearby cheetahs who are still stalking the boys. We had to move because the cheetahs are right there and they can see us and the cheetahs are focusing on us because we're like small and they think we're prey. Servals are fast. Servals, they are the second fastest cats in Africa. They can run about 40 miles an hour. And they love water. They love playing in water. They love being in water. They splash around. One of the servals' most recognizable features is his giant ears. Their large rounded ears can move independently so they can figure out exactly where small animals are, which makes them excellent hunters. They hunt for bugs? Mainly hunt for the insects or well, the lizards and things that hunt the bugs. So he'll go look for where the bugs are, but he's mainly looking for lizards like skinks and geckos and snakes because they love eating snakes. And as his son makes his way over the horizon, in what is sure to be another fantastic African sunset, our friend Asher tells us it's time to hit the hay. As soon as the temperature drops, he gets comfortable. Tucking in for the night, and we head back to Hog Hollow to experience another African tradition, a braai. So we're having an African braai where they barbecue stuff, and they actually came to our room here at Hog Hollow and are doing it for us. Ostrich in the sun is the beef. He barbecued out by the fire. They do a wonderful job cooking up some comfort foods we know from home, along with some exotic dishes for us to try. How is it, guys? Now we're going to try ostrich. After dinner, some of the employees arranged for their church choir to come over and sing for us. As I listen to the amazing harmony of these African voices, I think of what an incredible area of Africa this is. With a combination of dramatic scenery, conservation parks, animal encounters, rich culture and friendly people. And I can't wait to explore more of this part of South Africa called the Garden Route.